Hello! Thank you for being in a new video. This time I have unboxing of the Huawei Nova 12S. Let's get started. This is a mid-range device. In Mexico, its launch price has been 9,999 pesos. On the screen, you see the reference price in dollars so that you have more or less an idea. Although remember that the prices here are not the same as those there. Let's get to know what's inside this box. And the first thing we come across is the cell phone. So let's take it out of this packaging so we can see it directly. And notice how beautiful this device is. Definitely that Huawei has done an excellent job lately with respect to design. It has on this back a very curious pattern because there are some areas that are completely matte and other areas that reflect more intensely the light. So overall it looks very attractive. It is also available in blue and black color, so I think this cell phone is more of a design evolution from the last generation. We'll see in a moment when we know its specs. But for now it's a very nice looking cell phone. Let's turn it on while we see what else comes in the box. It's already powering up and we're going to see here. In this case it's a review unit. The one that I'm holding in my hands. So it comes without the key to remove the tray. But when you buy it, it should come with the key. And I don't know if they are going to send you a holster either. In my case, I don't have a case. But remember, it's a review unit. So I'm sorry I don't give you this information, but I'm going to ask and let you hear on screen if it arrives with a holster or not. And finally, here we have the charger, which is 66 watts fast charging with this USB-A connector. And obviously the cable is going to be from USB-A to USB-C. Also with these highlighted in orange. Obviously also, as I always tell you, if you want to have the fastest and safest charging possible, make sure you use the original accessories. So this is the contents of the box. I'm going to put all of this away and we'll come back and take a look at the specs of this phone. There, I already have this device configured in my hands. So let's now get to know its main specifications. So you can see how similar it really is to its last generation. Although in the past generation, it didn't have the S in its name. It was simply Huawei Nova 11. But believe me, they are very similar, exceedingly similar, even in dimensions and in many sections. So they will be very similar devices, but with the main difference in their design. And in the system version, since this device comes with MUI 14, which is the latest operating system of Huawei for their cell phones, so it will be a good news. Curiously, in this year, I do not know why they have not presented the Huawei Nova 12 Pro. That would come to replace the Huawei Nova 11 Pro. We do not know the reason, but hopefully in the future they can present the next generation of the Pro model, which does exist, but was not presented in Mexico and in many other countries either. It has a weight of just 168 grams and a thickness of 6.88 millimeters. It really is a very slim device in this sense, so it's very light and very slim to hold comfortably in your hand. The screen is 6.7 inches diagonally. It has OLED technology and 120 Hz in its refresh rate with full HD plus resolution. That is to say, it is a very good screen. It's going to give us good colors, good contrast, even good viewing angles. As you realize, it does not lose considerable brightness when viewing this screen from a different angle. Perhaps, in the case of the white color, it is difficult to represent it very accurately from the side. But that's true of virtually all OLED displays. However, when you're looking at anything else in color, notice how it maintains a good display from either side. So the screen really is a good element, albeit the same as last generation. And note that we also find stereo sound. Although in this case, in the top audio output is shared with the headset for calls. So you have two audio outputs on this part and one audio output on the bottom. But it does give us a stereo sound with much greater amplitude. It also has fingerprint reader inside the display. So it takes good advantage of having an OLED screen to make it look more futuristic with these kinds of elements. The front camera is 60 megapixels with f2.4 aperture. It really is a very wide camera. In fact, in this case, it wasn't even on the widest possible setting yet. So you're really going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this camera for group shots. Here's a quick look at what it looked like before I took the picture. And you see how it has some overexposed areas here. But after you take the picture, it does a nice balance of highlights and shadows. In this case also, the display supports HDR content. So this area is more brightly lit on the screen. 
Therefore, through the camera, it may come to look a bit overexposed, but it really isn't. So we have a very good experience on this front camera. And on the back, we have the 50 megapixel main camera with f1.9 aperture, then the ultra wide camera with autofocus. I mean, it also works for macro photography with eight megapixels and f aperture 2.2, and then simply depth detection. In fact, Huawei in its specifications does not show details of this camera. So I guess they don't consider it a camera as such. And I like that. Because I don't like it when they tell you it has triple camera. And actually this sensor is suddenly a little bit underutilized. Although in this case notice that all these cameras do seem to me to be well utilized. Let's take a look at the evidence. Here I have a picture with the ultra wide camera. Which really does show us a good level of width. As well as a good light balance for a very interesting backlit shot and also good color so the camera really looks very good to me and I even remind you that in this case this area of the screen where the sun was at its strongest it is also illuminated in a stronger way to have more realism in the photo here we have now a picture with the main camera it looks very good then I applied digital zoom to X and believe me it keeps the picture quality very well so you're going to take very good pictures and even at the maximum zoom which is 10x I also feel that it still maintains good quality although I don't think it's its specialty in the zoom section but I think it does come through in a good way and now look at this picture I got with the macro camera which at the same time is the ultra wide angle camera look at the tremendous level of detail that I have in this image so in this case it is a very useful feature Compared to what the main camera can give us, in this case I zoomed in two X's and this was as close as I could get. So you get to see a good level of detail. But definitely with the macro and ultra wide camera, you can get much more detailed things even. And finally I took some portrait pictures to test more or less how is the depth detection. And believe me it does an excellent job. You see very accurate detection, you don't see any cloudy edges. I actually really liked the portrait, even in terms of color. And watch how it lets us take portrait with a 2x zoom setting and it still looks pretty good. And even portraits with the 3x setting to give it a much more professional touch and look. So I really like the portraits a lot in this first impression. In the review I will tell you much more in depth how this camera works but as a first impression I really liked it. Also note that it does allow us to record video in 4K both in the rear camera and in the front camera. And this should be noted because few devices allow us to record in 4K with the front camera. But Huawei does enable it. Although I insist that in that sense. Both in the portrait photographs of very good quality as in the fact of supporting recording in 4K we already saw it from the last model, which is very good. It has a 4,500 million battery, supporting a 66 watt load, the battery, even though it is not too big. In order to make the device very slim, I think generally in Huawei gives us a very good performance. Especially also considering that Google services do not come pre-installed. And that helps that it doesn't have so much power consumption. But remember that if you want to install Google services, you can access the app gallery. And it's not literally that you're going to install Google services, but you are going to be able to access the Google Play Store. We are simply going to look for Gbox and watch as we immediately get the option to install. And after installing Gbox, we will be able to access the Google Play Store without any inconvenience. Notice I'm already opening Gbox. Simply give it the necessary permissions. And from here already appears the shortcut to Google Play Store. In fact, I can press and hold and create the shortcut to the main screen. And immediately I already have this access. We simply have to register the Google account and subsequently it will let us download any application from Google Play. So let me set this up and get back to you. There you go. As you can see, I've already set up my Google account here. And I can perfectly access the entire Play Store app library. Obviously, the apps that you install from the Play Store, they are going to be in a virtual environment. So they may take a little bit longer to run. For example, we're going to install Firefox just for testing purposes. And notice how the installation process is just like it happens on any other device. But at the moment of running it, a small waiting screen will appear at startup. 
Already finished installing, I'm going to put open and observe how it is going to take a little more time compared to what other devices offer us, but it really didn't make a big difference. I'm already running this application and the shortcut appears here as well. So I don't know if you get to see that little loading screen that it shows at startup. Let me close everything so you can see it. There it is. A screen that takes a few seconds to start up and that's it. Then you can really enjoy many applications and the entire catalog of Google Play. Although personally what I recommend you most would be to continue downloading applications from App Gallery and only leave as a last alternative applications through Play Store. Another good news is that it has 256 gigabytes of storage, so you have plenty of space to store everything you want. In addition, Huawei offers us cloud storage. Note that Huawei is one of the few manufacturers that offers you its own cloud. For free, they will offer you a certain amount, but they also have plans so you can back up everything you want in their cloud. In this case, I'm going to put that merge all this. Note for free gives us 5 gigabytes, but we can click to expand and notice that the plans are actually pretty good. You can access a plan of up to 2 terabytes for a monthly payment of 179 pesos or you can pay for the whole year for 2148 pesos. And that's it. You have all that backup for all your devices. So the storage I think is pretty well covered. It also comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and the processor is the Snapdragon 778G in a 4G edition. This processor, the truth is that Huawei has been using it for quite some time. It's not a modern processor. It already used it since last generation in the Pro model and others. In fact, I think it's already two generations that Huawei is using this processor. Which I already told you, it's not a bad processor. But as the years go by, it craves more modern processors. Anyway, let's run a benchmark test. To more or less verify the performance it is capable of achieving in this test. And well, unfortunately, in this case, specifically that benchmark, I can't install it. Neither from Google Play, nor from Petal Search, nor from anywhere. So it's very strange that this benchmark won't let me install it. But we already know that this processor usually, usually gives more than a thousand points on a single core. More than two thousand points in multi-core. So it's a considerably efficient processor. But in the video review, I'm going to tell you more details. Also, if I run into any issues with any applications, I will let you know. For now, this has been all for this little video. I hope you liked it. If you liked the video, you know you can let me know. And we'll see you next time.